Chapter 49, The Flyer. With coaching from his mother, Brightbill was becoming a truly exceptional flyer. He wasn't the biggest or the strongest, but he was the smartest. You see, he, had his he and his mother had started studying the flying techniques of other birds. They'd sit for hours and watch how hawks and owls and sparrows and vultures move through the air. Then they'd go up to the grassy ridge and Brightbill would practice what he'd learned. Soon he was diving and swooping and darting and soaring around the island. The adult geese frowned at his flying tricks, but the goslings thought he was amazing. Each morning a gaggle of them would wait on the water for Brightbill to lead them into the sky, and then a few hours later he'd return home to Roz, shaking his tail feathers and honking about his latest airborne adventures. Mama, the other goslings didn't know that warm air rises, so I found an updraft, and we spent the afternoon circling around and around and hardly flapped our wings at all. Mama, did you see that lightning storm today? We knew there was trouble when the wind started blowing from the north, so we flew down to some shrubs and waited for the storm to pass. Mama, we just tried to fly in formation. We all took turns at the point, but everyone liked following me the best, so I led most of the time. Chapter 50, The Button Bright Bill was thinking about the small button on the back of his mother's head. His mother was thinking about it, too. They couldn't stop wondering what would happen if the button were pressed, and one day they decided it was time to find out. Roz sat on the floor of the nest. Her son nervously stood on a stone behind her. I'm ready when you are, said the robot. Okay, said the gosling. Here we go. Bright Bill took a deep breath. Click. Boz's, Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Want to make a prediction? Are you done thinking? Okay, let's find out. Ooh. Mama, can you hear me? There was no answer. Bright Bill waddled around and looked at his mother's face. Her strange spark of life had gone out. The gosling had never felt more alone. He was ready to switch her back on. But what if she didn't wake up? What if she woke up different? The gosling was afraid to press the button, and he was afraid not to press the button. Bright Bill took a deep breath. Click. Roz's body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. Mama, can you hear me? Hello, I am Rosam Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz. The robot spoke those words automatically, in a language Bright Bill didn't understand. His little heart raced as his worst fears seemed to be coming true. But a moment later, the familiar voice returned, and the robot said in the language of the animals, Hello, son. How long was I out? It seemed like only an instant to me. You were out for a few minutes, said the gosling as he hugged his mother, but it seemed like forever to me. Chapter 51, The Autumn The days were getting shorter, the air was getting crisper, and one morning Roz walked out to find a layer of frost on the garden. Autumn had come to the island. The tree leaves, which had been green for the robot's entire life, turned yellow and orange and red. Then they let go of their branches and floated down to the ground, and the forest gradually filled with the sounds of creatures, scurrying through dead leaves. Tree nuts were also falling, thunking onto roots and rocks, and occasionally clanging off the robot. The smell of flowers faded as blossoms withered. All the rich scents and colors of the island were draining away. The animals were also changing. Furry animals were growing more fur. Feathery animals were growing more feathers. Scaly animals were starting to look for new homes. Yerp, it's cooling off, croaked one frog to another. Before long, it'll be time for sleeping. Yerp, 
I'd better start looking for a good hole, croaked the second frog. Have you found one yet? Nah, croaked, a, croaked the first frog. I'll look for a hole next week. For now, I'm going to enjoy the warm sunlight while it lasts. Yerp. Many of the island animals were already thinking about their winter hibernation. Frogs, bees, snakes, and even bears would soon disappear and spend the next few months resting out of sight. And then there were the birds. Some birds, like owls and woodpeckers, would spend the winter nesting and eating the island's few remaining edibles. But the migratory birds were preparing for the long journey south to their warm wintering grounds. And among the birds destined to leave were the geese. Chapter 52, The Flock. Brightbill slowly waddled into the nest. He had a con confused look on his face. Mama, the other goslings said that we have to leave the island soon and we won't return for months and months. Is that true? That is true, said Roz. You know that geese migrate south for the winter. Will you migrate with us, said Brightbill. I cannot swim, I cannot fly or swim, so I will spend the winter here on the island. Can I stay with you? I do not think that is a good idea. I think you should migrate with the flock. How long will the migration take, said Brightbill. Where will we fly? When will we come home? I do not know, said Roz. Let us go ask the others. And so the robot and the gosling walked around the pond to where Loudwing and her friends were chatting. Hello, everyone, said Roz. Bright Bill has some questions about the flock's upcoming winter migration, and we'd be happy to answer them, said Loudwing. What would you like to know, little one? How long will the migration take, said Bright Bill. Where will we fly? When will we come home? It'll take us a couple of weeks to fly south, said Loudwing, depending on the weather. We'll join other flocks at a beautiful lake in the middle of a great sprawling field, said another goose. And we'll come back to the island after four or five months, said someone else, depending on the weather. As they walked back to the nest, Bright Bill said to his mother, Lately, I've been feeling the strong urge to fly, not just around the pond or the island, but to go on a long flight, a journey. Those are your instincts, said the robot. All animals have instincts. They help you survive. Do you have instincts, said the gosling. I do have instincts. They help me survive also. And my instincts are definitely telling me to fly south for the winter, said Bright Bill. I just wish you could join us. I'm going to worry about you while I'm away. Do not worry, I will be fine, said Roz. How bad could winter be? Uh-oh. It can be pretty bad. Okay, here we go. Chapter 53, The Migration. It was the night before the migration, and Bright Bill was sleeping fitfully. Roz watched him toss and turn until he finally crawled up into her arms, and she rocked him to sleep, just like the old days. Early the next morning, Bright Bill waddled outside and looked at the pond. The water was perfectly still. A few lazy clouds drifted above. Geese were already gathering by the beach and then Tiny Claws scampered down from the treetops. So today is the day, huh? said Chit Chat, perched on a branch. You're going to see so many new things and meet so many new animals, and if there are any squirrels at your wintering gr grounds, please tell them that Chit Chat, Chat says hello. Today is the day, said Bright Bill. The flock will be leaving soon. Are you excited or nervous or scared? I'm all of those things. The squirrel whispered, Well, don't worry about your mother. I'll look after her so you'll know she'll be perfectly fine. Bright Bill smiled. I'm afraid it is time to go, said Roz, as she stepped out of the nest. Okay, Mama, said the gosling. See you in the spring, Chit Chat. Have a nice migration, Bright Bill. The squirrel scampered back into the treetops. Come home with lots of exci exciting stories. But not too exciting, because I don't want anything scary to happen to you. Goodbye. The geese were honking with excitement, then hustling around as they made their final preparations. Several of the fathers huddled together, discussing their flight plans. 
while the mothers took a head count. There you are, Bright Bill, Loudwing honked from the middle of the crowd. We're just about to begin. May I have your attention, please, said the biggest goose. As most of you know, my name is Longneck, and I'll be leading this year's migration. I'm asking everyone to please join your families for takeoff. Once we're all airborne, each family will take its position in our V formation, and we'll start the first leg of our journey. Are there any questions? I have a question, came a booming voice. My son will not have any family with him. Where does he fit into the formation? Everyone looked to Longneck. He can fly with me, said the big goose. I hear Brightbill is a very clever flyer. I could use his help at the point. A moment later, the geese began flapping and honking and making their way into the air. A cloud of feathers floated down around the robot and her son. You are not a gosling anymore, said Roz. I'm proud of the fine young goose you have become. Bright Bill fluttered up to his mother's shoulder. Thanks, Mama. The young goose wiped his eyes. Is this where we say goodbye? This is where we say goodbye for now. Spring will soon be here and we will be together again. I'm going to miss you, said Bright Bill as he nuzzled his mother. I'm going to miss you too, said Roz, as she nuzzled her son. The goose took a deep breath. Then he shook his tail feathers, flapped his wings, and joined the flock. At first, the geese flew in a disorganized jumble, but each goose slowly drifted into position until the flock formed a wobbly V. At the lead was long neck, and behind his left wing was Bright Bill. They circled in the sky until the V pointed south, and then the geese began their long migration. Roz climbed to the top of a tree and watched as the flock slowly faded into the horizon. Now we're going to stop right there.